your someday starts today. It's time to explore and test the newest science, methods, and trends for creating a life you love with your host, Tanya MFK. Welcome to My Design Life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to My Design Life, where we learn and test the latest science tips, tools, and strategies for you to create your best life every day. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at My Design Life Show and at Tawny MFK. And if watching videos isn't your thing, head over to our My Design Life Show podcast to catch the audio. I'm Tawny MFK, and I'm so glad you're here. In today's show, we are going to talk about a tiny process that gets big results in our goal success. So let's dive in. Welcome to My Design Life. And now for today's guest. Unable to find a full-time job out of college, she took the future in her hands and created her own business. Her childhood of being bullied led her to a passion for helping others and compassion for the world at large. She now helps grow nonprofits and social startups so they can make their impact and has even developed her own program called Workshop Terra to spread social and environmental optimism. Realizing that she was now her own boss, she decided to follow her dream to travel the world, enabling her not only to explore, but to connect and help businesses globally. Joining us today to discuss how our small actions can make big changes Please welcome the founder of Hilanth sorry, Helianthus Advising, Ashley Madden. Welcome, Ashley. Hi, and thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, so your background is really proof of how the small choices add up. And as a former digital nomad myself that still travels extensively, you'll hear so many people say, oh, I wish I could do that. And, you know, to this day, it always hits me to my core because I, I want to just like grab them and hug them and be like, <laughs> you can, you absolutely can. And so many think that you have to have like this giant bank account or this crazy plan. But the truth is, is that it starts in the small choices. Oh, yeah. And so I'm really excited to dive into that today. And I just wanted to start with kind of maybe how you can tell us how you went from that first choice that that seems I'm sure overwhelming and impossible at the time like I can't find a job like to <laughs> all just start my own business like how do you get there so I started in college and I was one of those people that I knew that I wanted to help people my whole life I was like my goal help people got that settled mm -hmm. but the process of getting there just wasn't existent because they have all these majors and they don't really help you they're just like pick a major and go to college and I did that, and then I changed that, and then I changed it, and then I finally graduated with a management degree, but so did like 10,000 other people in my city. <laughs> so now I have this degree that's almost useless because too many people have it, and I searched for months, and finally I went back to my advisor, and she said, listen, Ashley, you're not going to find a job in this city, and you're married, so you can't just move. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to take time. And I was like, but wait a second, <laughs> do I have to do either of those things? So with my husband, we sat down and I was like, okay, I can't find a job, but I've been in marketing. I've had internships. I've even had jobs during college doing marketing. So why don't I just do it myself? And then on top of that, why do we have to stay in the city? <laughs> <laughs> so we looked online and we found what it's called the working holiday visa for Ireland. And if you've graduated within a year, you can actually just apply for this visa, go to Ireland and you have permission to work and live for a year. Amazing. Basically, like we saved up. All we had to do was save up to have like $4,000 in a bank account to prove that we would survive. Right. And then <laughs> we got there and I, of course I kept working remote. We got him a remote job and, just did it and that was that was that it was a lot of it was a lot of small steps just being like okay now today I'm doing this right and now I'm in Italy right <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's right. So you are coming to us from Italy today, um, which is exciting for me because I have a lot of people who come to us from the States. So it's rare that I have someone on this side of the world with me. And so I'm like, yay, same time zone. <laughs> really excited. Um, so, you know, you just kind of, you let the circumstances take you. And what I love about this is that you questioned it. Like, and, and I think that's a lot of things that don't happen to us is we have this um, idea of the way things have to be. And, and they will stay that way until we say, well, why are they this way? Why do, do they have to really stay this way? You know, and then, and then you, and then you went there and people might go, well, maybe I'll get excited and think, yeah, I, I could do something different, but then what? 
But once you let yourself open to that, then you start to find the what. And in your case, the what was, hey, there's a thing in Ireland that's totally available and we could do this. Why not? And then, and that wasn't it. I think even then people might stop and go, well, I don't know. It's Ireland, but I want for my whole life. And it's this big decision, but it wasn't. You're like, and then from Ireland, we decided to go here. And I think you've been since, <laughs> um, you just got to Italy. So you've actually been a bunch of other places. Like where did you yeah. go? Yeah. Yeah. So we started in Ireland and then, gosh, we went to Scotland and Portugal and England and France, Germany, yeah, <laughs> all over the place. Actually, next week we're going to Greece and then Japan, and then we're going to be doing the same thing with the working holiday in New Zealand for a few months in a camper van. How so exciting. So from there, it's just kind of, it is what it is. <laughs> right, right. And you're, so you're going to be yeah. in Japan in this winter time, like during winter? Yeah. 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 We'll I, actually be there for New Year's. And that's actually the mini vacation out of the whole deal is we that's won't be amazing. Working, we're yeah. just going. And one thing that I always thought was funny is my mom, she's like the, the normal manager and she's great. And she's like my inspiration for like being able to do what I do, but she was never the type to take risks. And she's the first one to say like, what you're doing is absolutely insane. <laughs> and when I was young, I was like, listen, mom, I'm never going to have a normal boss and I'm never going to work for anyone else. And she's like, all right. And now I just look at her, I'm like, so hey, I'm in Italy and I'm my own boss. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Well, and that's really kind of what we're here for today is, you know, this alone I think serves as a huge inspiration. But the goal, you know, everything in this show is really to show people that the choice is yours, that there doesn't have to be a set way that things happen. You know, uh, I know for myself growing up very poor, being able to take vacations or, um, I mean, the concept of vacation is completely outside of our family idea. Like that's just not, was not, I mean, we literally grew up in homeless shelters, a uh, back of cars kind of thing. And so the whole family vacation that we saw in the movies, that was not our life, let alone like European vacations and all that. And so when you did see something, even from people who could afford it, they, the wording I always heard was like, oh yeah, well you got to have like three or $4,000 back then. I'm sure much more now would be the idea because you got to stay in the hotel and you got to do this. And when I found myself a widow at age 25, I, I had an opportunity to get to Europe. And when I, I took that chance and saw that it was so attainable by other means, that there were other ways. Yeah. So yes, guys, if you want to stay at the Ritz Carlton and you want chauffeurs, you want that, it is going to be very expensive. Oh yeah. But if you want to do something in life, stop, stop seeing it only as one way and start to ask, well, how, you know, how can I do that? And, and like I was saying, that's really the goal of this show is to show that to people that they get to be the designer of their life, that there are specific steps and actions that you can take um, you know, it's one thing to be inspired and I love that. And that's, that's where we're starting right now. But after we're inspired, what, what do I do? What does that look like? Like if they go, okay, all right, Ashley, I hear you. There's an opportunity. I can do it. So what do I do today to do, get started? How do I do something to, to make a difference? How do I get over that where I think I'm stuck? Yeah. I mean, the easiest way that I've always explained it. And I actually, a lot of what I took, I took from an entrepreneurship class in college and it's basically like, okay, well, I have, I love being healthy and I love being fit, but people are like, all right, my new year's goal is to get fit. And in reality, that means like nothing. Like yeah. you can say that, but that's yeah. just, I want to get fit is arbitrary. Yeah. So it's they vague. Say, yeah. Vague yeah. goals are going to give you vague results. Like, so what exactly. is fit? <laughs> so what they say is to take smart goals. So specific, mm -hmm. let me see if I can do this specific, measurable, oh, attainable, cool. time bound and realistic. Yes. I get that all in order. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's two R's because they can choose the R's differently. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So basically you make a goal and you're like, okay, well, I want to drink more. I want to drink eight cups of water a day and gain, I don't know, 20% more muscle mass by the end of the year or right. whatever. And then you break it down and you're like, okay, well, to do that, I should drink water or I should eat vegetables or I should eat less meat or work out 20 minutes a day. And it's not like you have to do all those. That's insane. You'd never get there. Mm -hmm. But you can start by saying like, all right, today I drank eight cups of water and that's good. And tomorrow I'm going to keep doing it. And if you just do one small thing a day, eventually you're drinking more water and you're eating better and you're working out. And it's like, wow, I did it. I got here. It just took 
longer. It's not like a fast, instant process. Right, right. So really like being specific, being clear. And that's a huge part that I talk to people uh, about a lot is that when, you know, I use this analogy a ton because you're going to get tired of hearing it. But, you know, if we, we, if we want direction to get somewhere, we first need to know where we are. And so you, no one can help you. You can't help yourself. You can't go, okay, I'm trying to get to fourth street. And someone goes, okay, well, where are you? You're like, I don't know. Well, then I don't know how to tell you how to get to fourth street. So you have to really go, well, where am I? What, what am I, what's real? Like, what do I have around me? So in your example, you know, I want to get, um, you can't even determine that you want 20% muscle mass or anything until you know how much muscle mass you might exactly. have, right? So really guys, the easiest first step is to like look around and take stock. Like, well, what do I have? <laughs> what, where am I at, right? So, so we can take this in the weight loss goal, right? You go, okay, well, what do I weigh? Like, I know that's an avoidance a lot of us might have, but like, what do I weigh? That's a good yeah. place to start. Um, in looking at what Ashley's saying in terms of like have even travel, well, what money do I have? How long could I leave? What would, if I was gone, do, just, do I have a cat? Do I need someone to watch the cat? Do I have, uh, you know, do I have rent? Do I have, or can I sell a house? What do I have? Where am I? And we tend so often to go right to the roadblock or like, well, or, or even just, oh, I don't know. That, it's going to cost too much. Where are you first? Where are you? Like, let's see oh, yeah. where you're at. And then once we've done that, once you see, okay, well, this is how much I weigh, or this is how much, how many bills I would need to pay if I was to leave, then we can go, well, then what do I, what do I want to actually do? Well, where would I want to go? Right? So if I have, my bills are this much and I would need this much. Well, first, I don't know how much I would need. Where do I want to go? Cause I'm telling you, your plane ticket to Africa is going to cost different than your plane ticket to Europe. is going to cost different than your plane ticket to Illinois. So you got to figure out where you want to go. And then you can start making that plan, right? Like you're saying, you know, then you can say, okay, so if it's 20% muscle mass, I can start by drinking some water and getting healthier habits and starting there. So it's not about looking at, you know, okay, now I'm going to Africa. You go, okay, so then what can I do to get, I don't have the $4,000. So what would it take to, to make $4,000? You know, and you start going, yeah. maybe I'm babysitting, maybe I'm taking a second job. Maybe I'm looking at what digital nomads do or, or finding an opportunity in Ireland to go work and do something different. So, exactly. I mean, that's really what you're saying, right? It's like, we, we can just, we have to really start by identifying the pieces first before we can even take the action, right? Yeah, I mean, truthfully, like for a long time, I was always like, all right, five-year plan. This is like where I wanna go. But then you realize you're like, okay, well, and to be like what I'm doing as a digital nomad, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to this place. And then you get like halfway down the path and it changes. And I found that the best way to start taking steps is to be like, all right, well, before I can even decide where I'm going, I need a bank account. Like that mm -hmm. is something that needs to happen. So <laughs> step one, research bank account, choose best for me. Step two, like make the bank account. And then once you have that, you're like, all right, now I'm going to save up some money. And it might seem like it's going to take longer. And a lot of people say like, look at the end goal. But for a lot of people, looking at the end goal can be like, oh my gosh, I'm so never going to get there. Yeah. And then if you have like $4,000 saved up, you're like, let's choose Italy. And then you just, you go and you get started. I mean, they have tons of visas everywhere. Not all of them are working holiday, but if you pick a place and just throw a dart at a map and you're like, all right, I'm looking at that today. And then you pick it, you set that your goal if that makes sense well it does and and i love this because i'm a big pr believer of imperfect action you know there's times where you need to just take the step and the reason is is it's easier to and this you know edit crap than it is to edit a blank page and oh, yeah. so if you threw the dart like, like ashley's saying if you threw the dart was like well let's see what it would take to go to italy today um you at least have somewhere to start. So you might start and you go, oh yeah, this is, this is actually not going to work. This is not it. But now you already know something. That power alone is like, okay, well, if Italy's a lot because of X, Y, Z, then what about, you know, somewhere, what about Sri Lanka? Like something completely different. Like, so if Europe is, you know, you start to look at it and go, hey, did you know that if you fly into Thailand, there's a, you know, a 30 day free visa and you actually can get X, Y, Z. You know, that's the true thing, guys. You want to go to Thailand, 30 days, three weeks. Um, you, you can go in and do these things, but you have to start somewhere. And it doesn't mean you're going to have that perfect five-year plan figured out. You know, you're going to have, and I love that you brought that up, is that it, there's, 
you, it, it is good for us to have that five-year plan. It's good to have a 10-year vision, but we also need to come back zoom in a little closer and go, well, what's my vision for next week? <laughs> and what's, you know, what is it that I can do these micro steps and not only the micro steps, but the milestone, you know, because if, if let's put this again in terms of weight loss, it's always seems easily understandable for people, whether you need it or not, or want it or not, but you can go, okay, this person, I'm sure we've seen those people who are like, you know, 600 pounds. And if they're like, cool, you're going to lose 500 of those pounds. And that must seem like, insurmountable to so much but if you're like let's lose that first pound like yes the goal is 500 or maybe that you know i think 100 pounds probably unreasonable but like <laughs> you don't want to be 100 pounds but let's say you know whatever the number is right um that you, you know that that is what that's the truth that's where you need to be but right now our focus is that first one and when you can celebrate that first one that win is so huge and i think that was something you saw as well like that first win of like going to ireland i don't know if ireland was your dream place to travel for your whole life but it was you know it was the gateway drug it was the gateway yeah. like vacation that was like look we actually did this and what could we do next so those small wins when we're looking at something, those milestones, those micro, you know, pieces of the big picture, they work together. Like we need them all, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and you're, you're looking at this big thing as well. Like I was talking about in your introduction that, you know, you have this, yes, you want to travel and yes, you're doing these things you want to help, but you're like, you, you were like clear when you wrote to us, you're like, I oh, yeah. want to change the world. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, she's not messing around, guys. Like, she's like, she's not like, well, I want to support people. She has that. I'm telling you guys, if you see her, her, her information, she said that she's like, I'm changing the world. So like, <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit, please. Yeah. So like I said, when I, as a kid, all I ever knew was like, I'm going to change the world. That's my goal, period. And the story, we'll figure out the rest later. And it started as just being like, okay, well, I studied architecture. That went horribly horrific that was like a total crash and burn and then I got into management and I was still always had that goal and finally it was just like clarity at one point I was like you know what I'm gonna have a little eco farm and it's gonna have like 10 freaking businesses on it and they're all gonna support different micro areas because I come from a family and like you mentioned it before I was just heavily bullied as a child mm -hmm. I mean that from the age of even kindergarten at a catholic school all the way up until oh. about 11 grade it was almost daily that mm. I had somebody picking on me and somebody this so I grew up just really concerned for people that experience life like I did and I also have a very very special needs sister mm -hmm. so seeing people like cross the sidewalk to get around her because they're not afraid of her they just don't know right so I always knew like having a farm that would hire people that were different or support these all these different things was a goal and even still, I look at that and I'm like, that is, that is a lot. So I started healing at this advising because I can do marketing now and I can help other businesses now and then use that money to start all the different steps that it'll take to get yes. to the whole crazy farm sounding deal. Right. Oh, I love that. See, I hope you guys are really hearing this too, right? This vision that she has, this compassion that she has, even sounds far and maybe even far-fetched for her. But she, so, but you're not letting go of that vision. As a matter of fact, you, you're doing the steps. And, and I think this is what happens. A lot of people would look at those steps and go, okay, well, first up, I have to get a farm. And you're like, whoa, we're not even there yet, right? Like, like <laughs> Ashley's over here, like, I have to get a bank account, okay? <laughs> like, I need to start here. We're not even near farm territory. And, and I think so many people would let go of that idea already to, because I think they think that first step is, is that, like, I gotta get a farm. Oh, yeah. First, I gotta start with the farm. Then I gotta build the buildings. Then I do this. I, must, I, I guess I probably have to get a loan for the farm. And you're going, I'm gonna start to establish myself to have my a business that can support me that i can experience and travel the world which sounds like it also supports you not only in, in expanding your network um i know through travel for myself as well you start to actually can learn a lot of sustainable practices and things oh, yeah. that go on with all different types of farming opportunities that are out there in the travel world as well i have a friend who did uh, farming and, and helping a family in laos i know there's a place in thailand where you can live and help them grow their their herbs and vegetables and there's there's so many different opportunities out there that you can do these types of things and i think that's what you mentioned in the beginning you guys are looking at all these 
these other opportunities, all of those things are going to culminate to facilitate that dream. And so, but you're, you know, and I just love that you have that perspective to be able to go, it's there, it's not giving up. And this, and it's not even a detour. I mean, a lot of people might think that this is a detour. It's not a detour. You're like, I'm very methodically know that this is what I'm doing and it's going to always come back to this vision. And this is about the knowing where I am and knowing where I want to go. Right? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's taken time to realize that everything does stack and mm -hmm. that I'm not one for too terribly much fate or anything like mm -hmm. destiny, but even still seeing where I was as a kid and looking at where I am now, I can say that like, yeah, it's taken me a lot longer. I see people like, you know, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world where he's 35 and he's got an empire. Yes. And I turned 26 this week and I'm just like traveling around the world and have my own business <laughs> what many people would consider a success but like I look at this big dream I have and I'm just like hmm that's that seems far off so it happens yeah. to me even I still look and I'm like I'm gonna but then you have to stop and say like all right step one grow the business step mm -hmm. two start the second business and then just take it even smaller Yes. And honestly, our expectations, especially in this day and age of YouTube stars and, uh, and the Mark Zuckerbergs and things like that, these, these, I cannot stress the fact that these are the fringe cases. And oh, yeah. so many of us really start to believe, in, and especially with, with social media, we see everyone's successes. We, I mean, no one's posting up their failures, oh, yeah. right? So we see the successes, we're comparing that, and we start to truly believe, despite all of our knowledge, I'm sure you guys are all nodding your head, like, yes, we know social media is not all true. And even though we know that, we see that and we're like, but look at so-and-so's doing this. And, and even then you might see Ashley's Instagram be like, wow, and now she's here. Like she's just living the life of luxury. Everything's fine. And she's like, no, I have a different dream. Like my life now might be your dream, but my dream's over here. And there's a path for me to get there. We are all doing that thing and on our path. And so like, so get that first out of your head that the Mark Zuckerberg thing or anything other in a version of that, the YouTube star, the phenomenal over, quote unquote overnight sensation. First and foremost, I'm sure they'll be the one to tell you it wasn't overnight and oh, yeah. probably even be offended to be like, you know how many nights I stayed up and what I had to do to get there. But yes, it is. No, the, the, the billionaire 30 year old is not common. And so our expectation of how fast we think things are supposed to happen, I think it really doesn't allow us to, to truly appreciate our success, right? Totally. And it's, it's one thing that I deal with when I deal with marketing clients, because a lot of the times I'm dealing with these small business owners that they're looking at the other businesses. And of course, even businesses are going to tell you like, everything's great and everything's fantastic. <laughs> and in reality, they're like three seconds from bankruptcy. And, but they don't show you that. So your competition looks like it's doing fabulously. And then they look at me and they're like, we've been working on social media for a week. Where are all my clients? Right. And I'm like, it's been a week. I know that it looks like all these people are growing really fast, but the truth is they're not. It's, it's a slow process that takes time. And even me, like I work on social media all day and I write content for the internet all day and I still go look at the content and I still fall for the trap where I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. that looks really good. And I'm like, no, wait. I do that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, I know exactly what they're doing there. Absolutely. <laughs> well, so as you go through this and what you've learned and really, you know, kind of the concept that you're coming to the audience with today, I know is, is really, again, as I mentioned, the, the story of, of where you are now, which is all these little steps, the compound effect. Um, yep. If any of you guys have even read that book by Darren Hardy, it's, it's such a simple process, but it's so profound. You know, those, those little steps add up to so much and more so than a lot of those giant leaps. You know, a lot of times we see those giant leaps, we're like, oh, that's going to be the thing. And once I get that big step, it'll propel this. But the truth is, is those tiny little steps that add up tend to be more profound and propel us further than, than these big ones. The big ones give us maybe that little boost, but then it's like, yeah, and then what? But you get these, these little things, like you were saying, like that daily work with your clients and growing their list and growing the thing, you know, they may get one day where you're like, oh my gosh, there was a thousand people. You're like, yeah, that's great. 
it looks nice, but you know, it's still going to be these little tiny things, the conversation we have, that uh, reply that you gave back to their comment, that answering oh, yeah. them in the DMs, doing those little things are still going to bring more to your business than the fact that you just got a thousand followers in one day right who might not even care who might not even care who might have been like yeah we really like that quote you posted but the truth is is the person that you spent the time to engage with or, or got on the dm with that's the tiny little step that that person goes you know what take my money <laughs> because i trust that you're gonna help me <laughs> and so yeah. those so this this concept guys so whether you're running a business or you're trying to hit your goals you have something big that you're going into you know, this is the place that you come into, that you look at the big thing, do the big thing. But I know, Ashley, you were going to kind of talk to us today about those small steps and how to really start yeah. to develop those small steps. Yeah. So basically the way, and I mentioned that I learned part of it from my, uh, my entrepreneurship professor. I took like one entrepreneurship class and he said to me once that he didn't go to sleep before he did five things. And I got to thinking about it. I was like, okay, that seems arbitrary, but what's the deal here? So I looked at it and I was like, well, I don't really like just the whole five things thing, but I have five major goals in my life and I really like being active and rock climbing and stuff. So fitness is huge in my life. I like being healthy. I like reducing my impact on the planet, growing my business. Each one of those seems like massive goals. So from there, I really make the smart goal that's specific and all that stuff. And then I just take a piece of paper and I write down like, here are all the different things that I can do, big or small, just a, like, I think I call them cloud maps or just mind maps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the different things that you can do to get to this step. And you don't have to do all of them or even half of them. And then I say, all right, here's map number one for goal number one, map number two for goal number two. And then I'm like, I can do that. That's easy. And then mm -hmm. it's just those five, I'm going to do one thing from each goal every day. I so today... I, I'm not going to lie. I tried to do the workout this morning and I just wasn't having it. <laughs> so I just stopped. But instead, I haven't had any snacks and I'm eating healthier. And that's today. I might not hit my, yeah. I'm try to work out later. Might not. Maybe you'll go I for a walk. Try. Yeah. You know. So that's one small thing. And then like today, being on here is probably the biggest thing I'm going to do for my business for the day right. <laughs> <laughs> or for my personal life or really anything because today is just kind of a low day yeah but it's still a success because it's one thing that I didn't have to do before right and tomorrow it might be like checking a ton of emails that are sitting there when they shouldn't be so it's just the five small things and then every single day eventually you might realize you're taking bigger steps because money builds money kind of deal mm -hmm. small steps make bigger steps you can't take big steps without starting with a foundation of small ones absolutely I love that. So guys, if you're hearing this, you know, identify, first identify where you are. Like we said, you got to find those goals. And so Ashley, you have five goals, major goals right now. And absolutely. One of them was like impact on the world, right? Helping the planet. Like that's huge. What does that mean? So for her to like take that and narrow it down to specifics and then even within those specifics, so, well, what can I do? And I love that you, you do this kind of brain purge um, and just get it all on paper because sometimes you'll realize the first step is a phone call. You're like, well, I guess I first need to call Susie and see if she still wants to go, you know? And you're like, well, I could do that today. You're like, woohoo, look at you working towards your goals because you called Susie. Like, like you guys, sometimes exactly. it's really that as simple as that. Um, my husband and I are looking at planning a trip and I, I've been meeting to, meeting to, meeting to, and finally it was like, okay, step one how much are tickets? <laughs> like, that's a really quick answer to whether or not you're going to go. So it's like easy to go like, wow, tickets are $10,000 or they're 500. Well, guess what? You know, so once you find out now, you know, that next step and you know what the next step might be the ticket step. Okay. Buy them, <laughs> you know, or the next step is make a decision whether or not to buy them. And then once you take that step, you can open or close that door. And I honestly believe that even closing the door to a goal, it's still an accomplishment. Because oh, yeah. if you run through something and you're like, this, this is a, something I want to do. And you start to go through and go, you know what? And now that I'm really looking at it, it's, it's actually not the thing that I want. But if you don't go through that process, you'll always wonder or have that regret and have those things. I'll, I'll tell you guys, when I was younger, I, I love putting parties together and I'm really good at like doing this whole social thing. And I was like, everyone, you should really do this. 
I was like, that, you know, maybe I should. And I started looking, I probably was around your age and I started looking at things and I started putting it together. I was like, okay, I would need this. I would need that. And for those of you who know, I'm type A OCD, like crazy organized list lady. And so I had on my list and I was going through it and I was like, well, what would the schedule be? And I started looking at it and then it hit me after a lot. And I was doing this for a while, like a couple of months working on this. Like, cause I was like, this is going to happen. I realized the thing I wanted the most was to have time available to myself and to enjoy the holidays and the weekends. And then I realized, when do people usually have events? <laughs> holidays and weekends. This career is not going to work out for me. <laughs> and so yeah. all of that time that I spent on that, some people are like, well, I wasted all that time. But for, for me, it really finally released me from that, that idea that I wasn't doing something that I could do, that, that this was an opportunity I was sleeping on. Because when I went through it, I was like, you know what? It is a good opportunity, but it's not my opportunity. And I was able to let that go and then move on to the new one. And so this process is so helpful for so many things, right? Like letting go, of not, not only just getting to a goal, but also letting go of, of regret or, or wonder, you know, like, oh, maybe I should have opened that t-shirt business. You know, I would have been a billionaire by now. Go and walk through that t-shirt business and see if it really is the thing. Is I have one of those myself. Yeah. Yeah. It was when I was run. I was planning on running and I ran in college and I ran in high school and I was like, all right, I'm going to do the Disney, I think it's called a, the Dopey Run. It's the one where you run like a 5K, a 10K, a half, and a full all in one weekend. Oh my goodness. And yes. I mean, I've ran all kinds of things. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this step one, step two, step three. And then I got to like part of the way through, I was running and running. And then I went to one, like one of those cycling like classes where you're supposed to dance and cycle. I, didn't uh -huh. so I, <laughs> I actually ended up not liking it so much. I hurt myself and I had to go to physical therapy for my knee. Oh my gosh. I realized like, I wasn't even really sad that I couldn't finish training for the race. And even though I'd ran my whole life, I was like, I don't want to run 72 miles in a weekend. Right. A lot of people do. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. But it's not for me. My racing right. days are over. Yeah. Well, and that was the thing, just liking to run didn't mean that this is where it had to go, right? Exactly. To this level. And that was the thing for me, like, just because I like to put together these events doesn't mean that it has to be the career. And I want to say this, this is bringing me to something that I'm such a believer in. Just because you find something you like to do does not mean you found your passion and purpose. Oh, and I think yeah. so many times we confuse that, like, well, if I uncover the thing I enjoy doing and then I make it my career, I'm going to find happiness. More times than not, it can be the thing that makes you hate it. Okay. Yeah. I don't, and it just sounds weird, but if you talk to a lot of marketers, they'll probably agree with me. I don't like social media. Right. Like, I have so many issues with social media and what it's doing for our mental state and what it's doing for our emotional state. And then I do social media every day. So it sounds totally right. conflicting, but the <laughs> truth is social media is not my passion. Writing, I was what they would consider spelling dyslexic as a kid. Mm. Writing was never my passion. Right. <laughs> and so now I write and you'd never think like, oh, well, my passion is like cuddling with animals, but I don't, I don't have like anything to do with animals. It's completely different. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's interesting you say that because my, my background, um, I have a, you know, I'm much older, so I have a long, varied history of background going from healthcare and then into marketing. So my background actually is marketing and I would never, I, ne first of all, I never did. I never was like, you know, I want to be in marketing. Absolutely not. <laughs> never wanted to do that. I would have absolutely been the, you know, I actually think as a kid, I wanted to, I wanted to be an aerobics instructor a uh, choreographer and something else. I remember I wanted to be three things and I was like, I'm going to do all three. And, uh, and that didn't happen. So, but marketing was never the thing. And the reason I fell into it was because I, I, there were people who had goals and this was a means to help them succeed. Yeah. And so it really, you start to look at that and go, you're absolutely right. I, I hate social media. I, I was so resistant to Instagram and I'm a marketer, right? So I was so resistant for years. I, and now my, my, my business and life has changed a little bit, but I came through that and I realized what it was, was a, I was good at it. And B, what it came down to was it's the same thing that you said, the, the bullying and all that, like there was a compassion to learn to help people get to the, those goals and those dreams yeah. and feeling, and, and there's something about social media where if you're doing it in a non-slimy way, you do give your clients an opportunity to feel, to be authentic and their voice to be heard, yes. right? 
And yeah. so, and so in that way, it's absolutely in line with what you want to do. Yeah. And a lot of it is looking at the, you think, I think not when people say like, I want to find what I'm most passionate about and that's what I want to do. I think you should look at the, the underlying thing, not what you're most passionate about, but why you're most passionate yes. about it. And that's yes. really where all of the steps start is mm -hmm. all the way back before your goals, before everything, where you look and say, why do I care so much about other, or why do yeah. I want to help other people so much? Oh, it's because I care about how other people feel. And then from there, you're like, well, I could be in architecture, but that doesn't make much sense. Well, I mm -hmm. could be in social service. Well, that doesn't make much sense. And you find, oh, marketing. And you're like, that is surprising. Right. But it still falls back to the base goal of I want to help. Right. Absolutely. And I love that. Finding, finding that why is so hugely important and why that thing, how it connects to you. And one of the things I love that Seth Godin says, and if you guys, I always joke, I, I love Seth Godin. If he was ever to start a cult, I'd be the first one to sign up. So Seth Godin, if you guys aren't familiar with him, he, he's written a bazillion bestseller books. And he has probably one of the kindest, most authentic voices in terms of, of business and marketing. And um, he's, he proposes for you to ask the question, not what you want for other people. Um, even, even in the most honest and, and passionate of places, but to ask, who do you want your customers to become? And when you can look at it that way and say, who can they become? There's a different concept of was like, I want them to be someone who becomes confident, comfortable, whatever the situation is, you know, of, of that. And then to relate your business to that, all of a sudden, like that passion filled situation happens. It's not because you like yoga, so it must be yoga. So now you have to be a yoga instructor because you can love and be passionate about yoga and just do it by your damn self in your living room. It doesn't mean it has to be <laughs> your job. And I hope some people hear that as a place of freedom as well. Cause I think some people are like, I thought that's what I want to do and I'm not happy doing this, but it must be because I really like it. So if I don't want to do it, maybe it means I don't like it and I shouldn't do yoga. Like, Whoa, it doesn't have to be the same thing you guys. So, um, this has been this has been so awesome. And um, before my last question, can you please tell everyone where they can find you and get your services and all the things that you're you're doing and or providing? Yeah. So I'm I really consider myself all over the place. So the easiest way to see what I'm doing at the exact second is I finally set up like a personal website, and that's AshleyMurrayMadden.com, all one word: A S H L E Y M A R I E M A D D E. And I always keep that with like, all right, here's the one business I'm doing. Here's the second idea I'm doing. <laughs> but other than that, I do have a business, Healing at This Advising, where I focus on nonprofits and social enterprises. So basically for profits that are kind of like a nonprofit. And then I started Workshop Terra just because I travel. And that's where I talk about like, most recently, a cat sanctuary in Rome that they're just helping cats where Caesar was killed. And so I put out videos and that's more just fun stuff if you like fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's like, and that's the passion project. And see, I love this because again, guys, you know, where this may take her, who knows, but she's, she's going with it. She's taking that imperfect action. And so she may take all three of these to create the empire. Some of them may fall off and she might focus on one. It might be, or none of this goes. And she's, she's on that farm that she talked about earlier. But the point is, is you're going with that, um, that imperfect action and just moving forward with it. And I love that. And I will mention, if you do find yourself in Vietnam, go to um, Jack's Cat Cafe. They have a wonderful um, process of helping the local cats and dogs in the area. So if you're passionate about animals, they're a really fun place. We worked with them and um, actually helped foster some of the animals there. So um, that's in Hoi An in Vietnam. But um, so you guys can find her. We'll have the link below this, um, as you know, and to follow her on social media. So for my last question to take all of this ideas of these small steps for a big action. What is the assignment that you'll have for me to do this week to take these small steps? Really, I think it starts with making sure that you have, and it doesn't have to be five. That's just an arbitrary number, but like three goals, four goals, five goals and saying, all right, here's the goal. And here's that long list of stuff that I could do. And then just doing one of those each day. And I don't want to say like, don't go to sleep until you do them because go to sleep. That's healthy. Um, <laughs> we've seen that, <laughs> but like try to get just those simple steps done. And if you had a goal of, you know, going to the bank and your car just isn't working, well then just try something simpler, like doing the Google search. And that's still one thing. So just right. do like one small step 
for each goal a day. I love it. So I love that it's, it's like it, if something you find a roadblock, it doesn't mean to give up. It just switch the goal, <laughs> just switch the step <laughs> or the, the tiny step towards the goal. So I love that. There's, so there's flexibility around. for life in this. Yes. Well, okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I have my assignment. Um, Ashley, again, it's just been so much fun. Um, it's time to give up the excuses and find the small steps to get going. It takes less effort than you think. So if you guys want to try this challenge with me, doing the brain purge, getting the information out there, do it, um, following along, make sure you tag us at my design life show and use the hashtag small steps, big action. You can also go to Ashley's website and mention me or the show and get a free consultation or a marketing and content plan. Um, that's already a small step that you can take to get yeah. immediate results, right? So, um, as always, I will guys, I'll keep you guys posted on how I'm doing with it at My Design Life Show on Facebook and Instagram. And you can check us out on our website at mydesignlife.show. You can also follow me, Tanya MFK, and learn all about our workshops, retreats, and programs at tanyamfk.com. So if you like this episode and you'd like to see more, please make sure to click that subscribe button to be notified of our next show. So remember, your someday starts today. Make it the best. I'm Tanya MFK, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. You can catch us every week at 1 p.m. EST live on the My Design Life Show Facebook page and on YouTube at the Tanya MFK channel. See how the challenges go by following us on Facebook and Instagram at My Design Life Show and at Tanya MFK. Do you have a method, tip, or hack you'd like to share or explore? Submit to be a guest or suggest a topic by visiting mydesignlife.show.